Good evening, everybody. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our Citrus Heights Live. Uh, we're so excited to be bringing this again to you for the second month. We have lots of plans throughout the year to bring different topics, provide opportunities to answer your questions. I'm Regina Cave in the General Services Department. And I'm Allison Bermudez with the Planning Division. And today we have our Police Department, our esteemed colleagues, here to answer questions regarding homelessness here in Citrus Heights and programs and resources. So well, I'd like to welcome in to take over uh, Lieutenant Jason Russo, Commander Russo, and Officer Felicia Taylor. So welcome, and we'll let them take over the chair. Hi, good evening, everyone. We're, we're excited to be guest speakers here on the Citrus Heights Live for the city. Uh, we did have the uh, luxury of having some questions sent in early. So we're gonna to try to address those questions first and then cover a couple topics. Um, and remember that uh, each month when you have the, uh, the questions uh, available to send in early, that's the best way of making sure your questions are gonna be answered down the road. So the first one, uh, or the first two, are gonna be really related to what we can do about homelessness. Uh, in this case, um, the first question is, uh, can you move them out of San Juan Park? Um, they, they appear to be loitering in the park. And uh, that's a good, good question to ask, because really um, what we have to get un under the understanding is, is that just because there are homeless out there, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are doing something illegal, because homelessness itself is not a crime. But sometimes there are illegal activities that we may find if we show up to something like that. So um, as an agency, it doesn't necessarily mean that we can just shoo homeless along. But we encourage those to respond if they feel that there's a crime being committed or there's a nuisance related crime, that we will respond to that and determine uh, the best action to take. And, and not every time it's enforcement, but sometimes there are some resources that we can provide. And here in the city, we do have what's called a homeless navigator. And that navigator is another tool that we use to try to help those who, who are struggling or may need help getting off the street. And Felicia here will talk a little bit about uh, the tools that the Navigator uses and how we interact with the police department. Absolutely. So our homeless Navigator is Tony Morgan, and she is uh, located within our police department and associates um, with our police officers and goes out on patrol with us. So she offers a very wide range of resources for our homeless, anything from obtaining documents to finding job placement or resumes and um, housing. So if you ever, if you find anyone that is in need of those resources, you can contact us uh, directly and we can get Tony out to them. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Felicia. Um, another question that's come up is, uh, why aren't there laws that prevent um, people loitering or uh, homelessness that attracts crime? They leave drug needles on the street or on our sidewalks. Uh, the question is, where is the public outcry and the health and safety? So always we're, we're trying to do the best we can uh, to, to address you know, people's concerns. Uh, again, we're gonna encourage people to call when they see act drug activity or crimes that are, are related to um, nuisances or uh, you know, needles found in parks. Uh, we do have the ability to work with our general services department to have um, the ability to have community cleanups. In fact, one of the, the things that's coming up, in fact, there's a meeting tonight uh, with the area near Van Maren Park. A lot of the residents are, uh, uh, have been fueled by the uh, garbage and needles uh, that have been left behind with some camps. So these camps have been cleaned up recently, but we want to make sure that we include those neighbors in the future uh, to have maybe regular uh, cleanups and maybe a community cleanup day. And we think that this concept is, use is useful in other neighborhoods as well. And we encourage those that uh, want to keep their neighborhoods clean or their, their open spaces clean to, to help with their neighbors and come to us. And they can contact us by calling the uh, non-emergency line at 727-5500 or sending an email to pop, P-O-P, at citrusheights.net. Uh, when we go to another question here, it talks about the uh, large accumulation of trash on public streets left behind by some homeless and who is responsible for cleaning up the streets, especially near Verner and Citrus Heights where Greenback and it dead ends between the Calvary Cemetery. So in this particular area, there's actually uh, some part of it is the county and some part is the city of Citrus Heights. Uh, but I can assure you that uh, we'll take a look over there and, and determine uh, what area is Citrus Heights and, and call our general services department and see if we can clean that up. And then whatever area is not, we'll bring it forward uh, to the county and, and get them to take action on their section. Uh, another question that came up, 
Uh, the reality is that there's a big problem with drug and alcohol and a small percentage of people with financial issues. Also, the group of people who are drug and alcohol break into cars and police have very little authority to do anything. What can we do to help this group out without uh, throwing money at the problem with no results? Yeah, thank you, John, for that comment. Uh, uh, yeah, there is, there is a percentage of these homeless that are within our city that, that do have some uh, drug and alcohol problems. Others do have some mental disability. That's not all of them. And then we do have a percentage of, of individuals who just choose to live um, on the streets because that's what they've done for years. Or they have close ties here but um, have financial difficulties or um, whatever their situation is. And each year we do a, a point in time count where we try to identify how many homeless are here in Citrus Heights. And I'll give Felicia the opportunity to kind of highlight uh, our last point in time count that um, our officers went out there and tried to find resources identify uh, how many homeless are in the city and uh, see what the next steps that they could have to maybe be successful at getting off the street. Right, so every April our entire police department does what's called a survey or a, we call it a HOPE survey in order to go out and give homeless um, outreach and resources to the homeless folks. So we, uh, it's all hands on deck, all of our officers go out and we contact as many homeless people as we can and I believe our numbers this were right around 168 folks that we contacted. The importance of that is so that we know who our homeless population are, where they are located, and how we can get out to them and, and bring Tony to them and offer them resources. Yeah, that's, that's a great resource that we do annually. Um, a couple questions that are coming in, I'll, I'll try to get to you in a second. Uh, remember, we want to remind you to um, try to send in your questions early to make sure we get to them, because I've got a couple more that I've got to cover for those uh, that responded early. Uh, one of them is uh, the area of Antelope and 80. Uh, there's a concern that we've forgotten about them over on the west side of 80. Um, he says he watches people shoot up right in front of the McDonald's at the gas station and they would request more police out there. Why is this allowed? Well obviously we do not want people shooting up drugs uh, in the public areas and uh, that's a concern for us too. Um, we encourage those that see activity like that to give us a call when it's happening so that we can address it. Uh, now that I've, I've seen this question, I will, I will definitely try to you know, get some extra resources out there and remind people of where this is occurring and some of our officers can do some extra patrols out there. But the best tool is to, for you guys to be our eyes and ears out there and when you see that, to give us a call on the non-emergency line, 727-5500. Um, going with a couple more questions, I've, I've pretty much answered most of the ones that were pre-ordered, but I'll give you uh, I'll give you one here uh, for, for Felicia. Uh, why does it seem true that, uh, that there are more homeless uh, in Citrus Heights than Roseville, Rockland, et cetera? You wanna address that a little bit, if you have any comments or ideas on that? So I don't, I don't know necessarily that there's more, but it is sort of a revolving door. So when we, get, we go out, we contact the homeless folks and we get them off the street and we get them housed and then others will kind of um, transition into our city um, and they, again, they, most of them have ties here or will find their way here. So um, our homeless population throughout the last probably four or five surveys that we've done have stayed relatively um, consistent and we haven't seen a huge spike. Um, so it's probably just a different population that you're seeing and not um, an additional um, amount of subjects that you're seeing as an influx. Yeah, and uh, on that same topic, uh, yeah, we do have homeless in Citrus Heights, but comparable uh, across the county, our numbers are actually pretty low. What were the, our, our numbers last year versus this year in our, in our homeless uh, uh, efforts in April? So uh, for last year, the numbers were 186 homeless subjects that we had contacted uh, throughout the entire city, and this year it was 168. Yeah, so we, we did go down slightly, and uh, like she mentioned, it, sometimes it can be a revolving door. Um, our navigator does work with people, and from time to time, uh, she's able to help people, but then uh, some people they just don't want to be helped or they fall out of using the resources that are available. Another question that came up here, this one's from Kenny, um, are other cities, um, do they have a tougher approach uh, than Citrus Heights? I'm not sure. I mean, I don't know the policies of, of, of some of our surrounding agencies and, and how their procedures differ, but what we do do is we fall within the law and so are those other agencies around us. Um, there are parameters. Uh, what we do provide is we do try to find long-term solutions by providing those resources, by using our navigator. So it's not just a, a punishment phase or moving them along, but trying to get a long-term approach to resolve the problem, which you know over time should solve over time at least part of the problems for those that need help and want help. But those that don't want help, those are the hard ones to uh, you know to resolve. And to piggyback on that, it is a regional effort. 
So it is us and the surrounding agencies all working together to make sure that we have consistent resources throughout the entire area. Uh, we got Monica here. She says uh, the city doesn't seem or doesn't see homeless as people you only care about arresting them. If the city cared, we, uh, we'd have shelters, rehabilitation programs, soup kitchens, and most homeless are vets and mentally ill. You people just don't care. So maybe these are just uh, people responding back and forth. Uh, we do see kind of a debate going on about homeless. We always, we always understand that this is a, a hot topic. Um, some community members feel really passionate about helping the homeless, but there's some preventative um, things that we do as an agency called crime prevention through environmental design. And we've only got a couple minutes left, but we'll kind of close with that about what you can do to maybe um, harden the target of your neighborhood or um, some crime prevention tips that maybe would help you less become an impact or less be impacted by or become a victim of any theft or any, any crimes related to um, you know, stealing of your power or using your garden hose. Do you have some tips that uh, maybe you could share that uh, you've run across in the field? Yeah, absolutely. So the biggest thing that I've seen is visibility. We always want to give visibility either in the daytime or at night by lighting up the area, making sure we trim back hedges and vegetation so that we can see very clearly into the areas that, want it, that need to be seen. Um, and they're very simple steps to do that and pretty inexpensive. Um, so making sure that you take that time to um, clear out the brush, uh, put up lights on the sides or the fronts of your houses or um, anywhere that you want, want to be seen is gonna be the best and easy way. If you need any other information in regards to uh, a location, um, every, every location is unique. You can always email us at pop at citrusheights.net and we can further help you with that. Yeah, so that'll pretty much conclude our portion of the homeless section. Uh, we'll bring the uh, city staff up here to kind of close and talk about the next session. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Commander Russo and Officer Taylor for the very informative um, information on homelessness. Uh, we understand it is a very hot topic. We do see the debates going on on Facebook. So we do appreciate the engagement and everybody joining in. What's, what's next month, Regina? So we have uh, scheduled for Thursday, August 15th, we have Sunrise Park and Rec District, District that will be coming in and talking about uh, their parks and some of their activities that they have going on throughout the year. So please be sure to come on back and also keep your eye open for the What's Your Question Wednesday so you can submit your questions ahead of time. We thank you very much and we hope you enjoy the rest of your summer. Take care. Bye-bye.